I don't think with this talented group, Scott's and Lemon, there's some cool thing to bring the passion that I have for the game. I'm super excited to be on the morning footy. Are you kidding me? That's how you want to wake up. Chào mừng các bạn đã đến với kênh YouTube của mình. Hôm nay mình sẽ review Hope Nam C. But what a game Tân we have on our hands on CBS number seven, Kansas taking out number 23, Iowa State. Và Iowa State 12 and 0 this season at home. Meanwhile, a loss for Kansas would equal their worst seven game start in Big 12 play under Bill Self. Let's see how this one has played out throughout the first half. That's Hunter Dickinson kicking it across to Johnny Furphy, who is coming off a 23 point performance after a good start there for the Jayhawks. On the other side, though, that's Keyshawn Gilbert knocking down the three, Iowa State yeah, would take the lead. Yeah, a minute later, they forced the turnover. Curtis Jones going that coast to coast. Throws up a tough shot. Somehow that falls in. Now it's a five-point Cyclone lead that capped a 9-0 and run over the last four minutes. But here come the Jayhawks. Five minutes to go for the half. Kevin McCuller Jr. lobbing it up for Parker Brown. Kansas would have a 1-0 lead at that point. But at the half, guys, Iowa State, 12-0 at home for a reason. They lead the number seven Jayhawks 30-26. to There's a look at your box score. And we're going to break it all down as we welcome you into our CBS Sports studios. Haley Sutton alongside Mike O'Donnell. Mike, this is a good game. We knew it was going to be a good game. But one thing we talked about before we even came up to the studio is how much of a defensive battle this would be. A little bit lower scoring. Has it matched those expectations that you talked about in the pregame? Yeah, first one to 65 wins, I think. Uh, but that's a little bit life in the Big 12 right now. Ultimately, what you have to understand, I think Jay Wright said it really well in the first couple minutes of the game. He goes, in that first five minutes of playing at Iowa State, it's like boxing Mike Tyson. That's what it feels like. And Kansas initially weathered a storm, thought it was Iowa State's defense was really good and solid. Kansas made a few adjustments. It was really that kind of five-point swing late in the first half where there was a, 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 a foul in a fast break against Taylor Lipsy that was on Parker Brown for Kansas. Uh, got a flagrant one, and then Bill Self gets a technical. And that's really kind of, that's why Iowa State's up by four points. Because both, neither team shooting the ball great, nobody shooting over 37% from the field. Physical game, free throws, and can Kansas make any threes in this game? They're one of nine from a three-point line. That was a huge key coming in because of the way Iowa State plays defense. They want to get steals. They want to get awkward rotations. And if Kansas can weather those double teams because because Dickinson's getting double teamed every single possession, especially in the post. They haven't been able to knock down any threes. That's ultimately what will blow the game open for Kansas. Before we pivot to talk about the Cyclones, I do want to talk about Hunter Dickinson because he's got four points. He's two of seven from the field. So if you look at this box score, you're thinking he's not having a very good game. But just as you alluded to, he's being double teamed. He's being asked to do a little bit different. How do you think his game needs to shift a little bit to help him maybe get on the scoreboard at the very least? Well, the game's going to be tight no matter what. That's what I expect. Hunter Dickinson could have a double double in this game, but a double double that won't include points, and Kansas could win. If he uh, continues to be focusing on being a great passer and distributor, passing out the double team, if Kansas can find a rhythm from three, that could change the entire game for Kansas. I would not be surprised. If Kansas wins this game, Hunter Dickinson ends up with a double-double without scoring in double figures in this game. It'll come from assists and rebounds. That's what he's going to have to be. He needs to be a great distributor in the second half. All right, looking at the other side of this matchup, you've got the uh, Iowa State Cyclones. I mentioned it off the top. They're 12-0 at home, so playing there in Ames is very difficult. What have they done in this game to have that four-point lead at the half? They're uh, making threes where they normally don't. They're really towards the bottom of the Big 12 and made threes per game. And so they're lining up opportunities to make multiple threes in the first half. That continues in the second half. That's going to be a great thing for Iowa State. Defensively, I think they're just fine. You held Kansas, who's one of the most efficient and uh, uh, great offensive half-court teams in the country to 26 points in the first half. Your defense is really good. Kansas is only shooting 36% from the field, and they've only hit one three so your defense is fine half court offense has been a struggle all season long for the Cyclones. The more the ball goes into the paint for Iowa State, the better Iowa State's offense is going to look in the second half. Something to watch out for. All right, something else to watch out for that I wanted to mention. I didn't get a chance to while we were talking about Hunter Dickinson. Before this game, he was three rebounds away from 1,000 career rebounds, 
and he uh, was a few points away from hitting 2,000 points in his career. I believe he's over the rebounds now, and he is closing in on 2,000 points, so something to watch uh, in the second half of this one. Let's talk about some of the other games that we are seeing play out across college basketball. We'll start with Georgetown Providence, because we talked about this before we came up. A little bit messy, a little bit kind of icky basketball a little bit. What have you thought about that matchup and just kind of how they've gone back and forth? One of the most intense pregame <laughs> atmospheres maybe we'll see in the, this year or in the previous years for college basketball. I mean, this was the return of Ed Cooley, right, coming back to Providence. That was a little bit of an odd breakup. It wasn't a clean breakup, at least from a narrative standpoint. Ed Cooley, now the head coach of Georgetown, trying to revive that program, going into the belly of the beast. The fans were lined up for days to get tickets to this game. Uh, students were an absolute wreck. They were knocking over barriers to get in this game. It was like a WWE match. Absolutely wild. The game itself, after about the first seven, eight minutes, became pretty good flow, and it was a really enjoyable game. This is a great game. Uh, you know, 60-58, it's been back and forth all game long. No team has really had a sizable lead in this game. I don't expect it to be uh, any team 